Okay, if I could, I was going to say if we can get this activity underway. Good evening, my name is Jillian Holman, but you've been waiting on us, so welcome. I wanted to thank our upcoming classes of fall of 2021 and spring of 2022 for being here this evening. On behalf of the Divisions of Enrollment Management and Academic Affairs, I would like to welcome you to the graduation seminar. We are also expecting our Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs to bring us greetings. I wanted to recognize her, but I'll have to recognize her once she gets here. I also want to thank our guest presenters for being here this evening as well. Okay, so thank you. So with that, if I could draw your attention to this evening's agenda. Okay, and so you may want to move closer because this is as big as some of these screens may get. So um, since our provost isn't here, we're gonna jump right into the graduation requirements. Okay, but first I wanna let you know where we're located and we mean in the Office of Records and Registration. Our lobby is open from eight to five, Mondays through Thursdays and on Fridays it's limited from 8 to 3 p.m. because we process uh, a lot of paperwork. So we need that downtime from 3 to 5 to process all your requests. Uh, we're also located in the Miles W. Connor Administration Building. There's our telephone number. We also have our individual numbers listed on our web page. We do have a phone tree, so the information that you do get from that representative might be somewhat limited. Sometimes they tell our students to come on campus, but if you can find our emails and our telephone numbers, we would gladly welcome those calls and or emails. Once you get to our web page, you'll see that, if you could just go back one more time, this means, yeah. If you go to our web page, you'll see all our forms, policies, and procedures, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of our policies and our procedures, especially when it comes to processing the graduation application, permission to enroll, and course exceptions. Well, because of COVID, all of our forms are really available online. So your professors have access to their forms and students have access to your forms, as well as their transcript requests. All right, really important for you as just students, seniors, juniors, whatever, to have access to the academic calendar. Once you click on that, you know when school begins, you know the last day to add drop courses, um, when to submit those urgent permission to enroll. Professors also need that information so they know the last day that students are gonna be added to their course and when finals begin, okay? Um, oh, big date that someone already asked me about, a sports management major, he asked, when is the commencement? It's May 20th, okay? And it's gonna be on campus. Um, I was gonna wait for Dr. Wanza to talk more about that. She's in it, uh, this evening's program, so she'll speak on it. Um, for our fall folks who are finishing, the last day of the fall semester is December the 21st, so that's when all the exams are gonna be uh, concluded, all right? Thank you. Okay, so you're probably wondering about your requirements for graduation. So not only do you have to take um, your major requirements, but you also have to take electives um, and a university requirement. So we're down to one university requirement, and that's freshman seminar. If you haven't taken that, that's because you probably transferred in 25 credits or more. So once we get to the academic requirements page, and if you have um, Eagle Mobile app, you could follow along with that. But once you get to your academic requirement, it may or may not say that you satisfy that, but you satisfied it if you have transferred in 25 or more credits, okay? Um, if you have a minor, minors are required 18 additional courses, 18 to 21, so that's a cap. A minor is not just something you just engage in on your own. You really need to talk to that major, that minor department, but the, the chairperson of that department 
and or an advisor so you can complete the declaration of major form. I see a lot of graduation apps with folks just throwing a ma minor on there and it was not approved. So we really need that to be approved. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Smith. Nice to see you. Okay, you come in peace? Okay, all right. So for every major, there's a departmental exit uh, requirement, a departmental assessment requirement. I call it the exit. Um, so for every major, you might have a capstone. You might have, and a capstone is a capstone course. You might have a portfolio. You might have even a presentation that you have to do or an exam. So at the end of the semester, I will ask all the fall candidates, I'll ask each department, is this person, have they met their departmental exit? If they say no, I move on to the next candidate to do the audit. And when I present the report back to that department, it'll say the person was denied because due to a departmental denial. I didn't even get a chance to audit to say what my findings were, if you were awarded or not awarded, it's just not done at all, okay? So we have people who have, um, Double majors. If you're, if you're like Ms. Gom, who, has, uh, who is a nursing major and a psych major, you can very well complete your major requirements, your electives, the other major requirements, and not yet meet 150 credits. In that case, we need you to take some electives. So I'm going to throw some words out there to you like Hallmark Code. So every state institution all their students must have a minimum of 150 credits in order for you to be awarded two degrees. So if we have some super students in here who really wanted to uh, engage in two majors, you need to look at the end of that semester in which you're trying to graduate to ensure that you have cumulatively earned a, a minimum of 150 credits. Got that, Lois? Okay. All right, now we have students, some of our nursing students, they have already earned a theater degree. They've already earned a theater degree, let's just say an urban arts degree, and, but they really had a passion to be a nurse. Once you come back already having a bachelor's degree, that's called a second bachelor's degree seeking student who is trying to work on another degree. Your minimum required requirement for students to earn another degree is 30. That's just the minimum, not just because you took 30 credits, we're gonna go ahead and award that degree. That's just the minimum you must have, okay? Okay, so I was speaking about the Eagle Mobile app. You could follow along, you could go to your student center and under your name, let's see, let's see if this bad boy works. Under your name, you hit the drop down box and you'll see academic requirements. If you could blow that up just a little bit. Move it up right there. Right. And so then once that pops up, if you could minimize it, please, and move to the right hand side. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. And so once you hit collapse or expand, I should say you'll start to see what I was um, speaking about, the orientation. So sometimes your advisor will use this, but there's very, a variety of student tools that we use in order to audit or to make that determination whether or not you have been awarded a degree. Now, if you are a transfer student, it might not pick up on all of your requirements, only because the software is made to pick up on courses that are taught here. So if you took a, Education 100 course, it may not meet that requirements because it's looking for Education 203, not just Education 200 transfer, or even if it says 203, it might not pick it up. So if your report is not reading 100% accurate, do not panic. If you do not see your course being captured by the software, please look, bless you, please look at your unofficial transcript to determine whether or not you took that course or not, okay? All right, so again, I just want to stress the academic requirement report is designed um, to determine whether you're meeting academic pro pro progress, okay? 
And can you hit it one more time? And at this time, I'd like to bring one of our rock stars up to the podium, our Director of Financial Aid, Mr. Burry. Good evening. Y'all graduating, y'all ain't, no, ain't excited? <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. We can keep y'all here some more. Y'all want to stay here a couple more years? <laughs> okay, I know y'all excited about going out into the workforce. Some of y'all may already be out there, but I did want to say congratulations. Uh, you deserve it. It would take you far. And I want you to appreciate your time you here, had here at Coppin. That's from financial aid office and myself. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Marcus Bird. I'm the director of financial aid. And I am here to bring you some requirements uh, or requirement that for financial aid that you would need to complete in order to receive your diploma. The Department of Education requires us to collect exit counseling for every student that has received a loan while they were in school. Whether it was at this institution or another institution, you'll need to complete the exit counseling. All right, I wanted to make sure what it say. I don't normally, I hadn't done this in a little while, so I just wanted to make sure what the board say. Um, at the graduate level and the undergraduate level, you would need to complete the exit counseling. You can do so by going to studentaid.gov. Now, there's a pamphlet, a book that I gave you. It gives you all this wonderful information, but the, the main thing I want you to look at is studentaid.gov. You're going to log in with your FAFSA username and password. Everybody still remember that? No. Well, let me tell you, if you got student loans, you need to keep that information forever. Um, although you do the exit counseling and we free you to get your diploma and everything and we fulfill the requirement of the Department of Education, you can always use that login to monitor your repayment um, schedule. Even though you're going to work with a lender, the best way to double check the lender and what the Department of Ed has in the system is to go to NSLDS. Anybody ever heard of that? Anybody know what it means? Okay. And it's in the book, but it's called the National Student Loan Database. It's a clearinghouse for all your student loans. Okay? So you need to access NSLDS maybe a year from now and just take a look at it and make sure the status of your loans are in good condition. Why do we want to do that? I'm an interactive person, so somebody got to say something. Why do we want to make sure our loans are in good status? What happens if they're not in good status? Default. What happens when, it, when your loans go in default? Oh, she went all the way there. <laughs> so so uh, you want to monitor that because your, pro, your, your servicer can make a mistake as well. Okay? So you want to make sure that you monitor your national student loan database and you want to keep a good relationship with your lenders. We do not want your loans to go into default. Coppin does not want their loans to go into default it negatively affects us. It also negatively affects you. It can keep you from getting a job. It can keep you from getting a home. It can keep you from uh, uh, any kind of lending practice because it will be reflected on your credit report. It's probably, I'm sure it's already there. It's, it's in a in deferment status right now. So. I need you to do the exit counseling. I need you to monitor your loans on what, where, where do you go? Say that again. 
studentaid.gov. So somebody said National Student Loan Database. Both are correct. You can go to Student Aid GOV, and they have a link there where you can go to National Student Loan Database. And you can also do a Google search for National Student Loan Database. Pick the one that has the GOV ending, OK? And you can log in using your what? Username and password. Thank you. Am I done? <laughs> nah. Um, are there questions and answers at the end of here, or can I take a couple now? Ms. Hall, can I take a couple of questions and answers, or at the end? Three whole minutes. Okay, any questions? What about the student debt relief? Student debt relief. You talking about what CARES Act? Or are you talking about the $1,200 that everyone received this past fall? So in the spring, so so I'm, that's a good question. So they titled it student debt relief so that you wouldn't have to borrow for that semester. So it's it was your, it's the student's decision to decide. Okay, I don't need to borrow as much because they're giving me eight sixty five or they're giving me twelve hundred dollars. So I know that could have been confusing. Maybe a better name would have worked. Um, but. Uh, that, that's the, the reason. And did everybody hear the question? The student debt relief, that's what she was asking about. The student debt relief was the, the payment that you received that uh, either you got it directly in the spring of 21 or you got it on your student bill this fall. But all those funds came from CARES Act funds. Okay. So, all loans go to the Department of Education and they assign it, assign it to a servicer. So if you're having, uh, that's an excellent question. So her question is, do you get to choose your servicer? The Department of Ed will assign a servicer to service your loans and they will, if you have them in different lenders, they'll move them all to one lender or one servicer. If you're not happy and it talks about that in this book, is that you can contact the Department of Ed Education and request for your loans to be serviced by another servicer. Questions? In the back. Okay, good question. Um, two good questions. Okay. How long does it take for you to do the exit counseling? So I want you to take the exit counseling kind of seriously because it's a questionnaire, but it puts some examples of what your life may be. So it may ask you how much you're earning, and it'll ask you, it may ask you your major, and it'll tell you what the average salary is for your major. And then you got to put your bills in there, and you got to think through the process. There's no right or wrong answer. It's more about educating you how the loans work, how you, how you should think about budgeting and everything. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to complete the exit counseling. When can you do it? You can do it tonight. OK? You can do it tonight. Uh, we, if you're graduating, is this for fall too? Let me, let me take it back. I would suggest you do exit counseling if you're graduating in May after the semester starts in the spring. It won't hurt anything, but it just for, we get it in reports, and the closer we have it to your graduation day kind of helps us, especially if it's in the same semester. So if you're graduating this December, then tonight, by all means, go out there and do it. You don't have to notify us if you complete exit counseling. We get a report and we update that probably about once a week. The exit counselor. So they're going to log in to studentaid.gov. Okay, she's asking how will they know the, where to go and everything. So you're going to go to studentaid.gov. At the bottom of the page, go to exit counseling. And you'll sign in with your FSA user ID and password. and. It'll tell you that your confirmation that is complete. 
and it'll tell you that the information is going to. My time up? Mm, yes, thank you. Oh, okay. Well, thank you and congratulations. Okay, I'm trying to keep this program interesting with our guest panelists in and out. Okay, permission to enroll at another institution. We only encourage students to do this if you are, before you begin to think about graduating, people engage in this, students engage in the permission to enroll um, when their course isn't being available, if it's, not, if it's not available. So if you are 90 plus credits, meaning senior status, we want to deter you from doing that only because we want our last credits to be copping credits, because you're in residency with us. Actually, we want all your credits to be copping credits, but we have transfer students, and we also have times when courses aren't available. So then we sign off for permission to enroll. You do need permission to do this. You have to have the signature of the chairperson, the dean, and the provost office, because you have 90 credits. If you have a friend or another colleague who has less than 90, they only need the chair and the dean's signature. Now, the reason why we do that is because we want to know why isn't this course being offered? Did something happen? So that's why we have the provost's office signing off as the last person giving approval. Then the form is routed to us. Then you're going to get an email from one or two representatives from within the Office of Records and Registration saying that you've been approved. Please don't wait till the last moment to try to register at another school because it takes a while for all those signatures to be acquired and then for the form to be submitted to us. Now, if you, okay, so if you are engaging in um, a permission to enroll, you will see one of these um, place markers on your transcript, SCOR or Reggie 490 or 491. So that is for like um, two things. It lets you know that we processed the paperwork and it also, knows it also notifies financial aid that you're taking three additional courses somewhere. So that's gonna help with your financial aid if you're receiving aid. So these are our sister schools. So if you get permission to enroll at another institution and it's at one of our sister schools, it's called an inner institution registration. So if you were to take a course at University of Baltimore, that course would not appear at the very top of your transcript. It would appear as though you sat right here at Coppin and took the course. Okay, so the GPA will be averaged in. If you get an F, the F will be um, also listed on, and unfortunately, let's hope you don't get an F because then that's then calculated into your GPA. All right, and I already talked about the residency rule, and that's what I spoke about. Um, your final 30 should be taken here, and that's why we need that additional um, signature from the provost's office for you to venture outside of Coppin to do so. All right, and this is only for unusual circumstances. We just don't want you taking a class somewhere else. And the reason why we have the chair and the dean sign off is because we wanna make sure that that class is even equivalent to our course here. You might take it at University of Maryland and we say that doesn't really meet the description of the course that we need you to take here. And you've already registered at the school and taken an exam or two, so we really need for that course to be equivalent to ours. And then we have to transfer it back. And that's another reason why we have the permission to enroll process. So we know once you present us with that transcript, we know what the course will come in as. Okay. Okay, so there is a limitation. So um, I know that we have a few students with transfer credits. If you attended a community college and you have transferred in 70 credits, more than 70 credits, and you needed to take additional courses at another institution, you cannot take, you cannot revisit the community college because you are already limited. Now, if you want to go to a four-year college, a sister school, or even go to Stevenson to take that course, you can do that because you have maxed out at 70. Now, some transfer students are saying, well, I've transferred in 100, 100 credits. But if you look at your transcript a little bit closely, 70 is what has been calculated into your GPA. 
all right? Because a lot of people say, oh, I have a lot of credits. Yeah, you have a lot of credits, but we're only going to calculate so many from certain types of institutions. So if you transferred in from a four-year college, it's then 90 credits. And again, if you've already transferred in over 90 credits from a four-year institution, you basically have to wait for that class either to be presented again for you to enroll here at Coppin, or you could ask for an independent study. But you really need to show your, that department that you really want to take this class, your GPA is high, you really need to graduate, and like I said, you need to let them know before that time, before that semester, because they might even present the class, okay? Okay, so please review your academic record. It's a lot of students who got caught up from last semester that their records haven't been closed because of that CSOR. That's like a missing grade. If you don't bring in that transcript or you haven't paid that institution, they're not, they haven't relieved, released that transcript to you, then that's a missing grade. I will send you an email to delay an audit. I have to wait for that transcript to come in and what that grade is. Even if you need to de needed the class to graduate or not, and you were just taking it as a filler in order to meet the 120 credits needed to graduate, we still it can we cannot award a degree with any missing grades. So please check your transcripts now, tonight. See if you have any missing uh, credits. It could have been a professor that left the university or you left the class and they did not uh, submit a grade for you from a year or two ago, or it, it was blank and then it turned into an F, okay? Um, also, course repetition. Let's just say you're an applied psych major and you received a D in psych 207. Now, you once you take that class again, you'll still have 117 credits because it's going to see that class as already being on your record. The only way that you'll earn an additional three credits is if you fail that psych course and then you earned an additional 120. Did you all get that? Because it's, it's hard to kind of break that down any further, okay? So if it's a major course, so who, what class are you taking this semester? Uh-huh. Okay, so she's taking 305 and you're graduating fall or spring? spring? Okay, let's just say, okay, so she's graduating spring. And let's just say, and I'm not calling a bad juju on you. She's taking that in the spring. And she's uh, at 117 credits. If she received a D in this class this semester and her advisor tells her to take the class again in the spring, and that's the only class she's taking. Once she takes that class again, she earned a D in it. D is poor but passing. However, for her major, it needs to be a C or better. She'll still have 117 in the spring because it'll repeat itself. Okay, so be wary of that because sometimes when your advisors are advising you, they're just advising you right there on the spot. If you're not looking over your entire transcript, because our advisors, they multitask, they teach, they write books, they're doing seminars. So if you're just getting advice and you're being advised as a senior, please, you have to look at your entire record because the advisor could just be looking at that one semester, okay? Okay, and this is the last slide before I bring in another guest presenter. Um, core substitutions and waivers. These two elements will not bring credits to your transcript. So let's just say you did transfer in that education course that I talked about. You transferred it in. Um, your chairperson read what the education course is. And they said, you know what? That looks like it could be our Education 203, Technology and Teaching. So they would then notify the Office of Records and Registration with a course substitution. So we're going to take that transfer course, and we're going to say that it meets the needs of our Education 203 course. That needs three signatures. So we need to start working on something like that now. So during your advising sessions, you may talk about, oh, you don't need to take 203 because you took that class. That's a conversation. Unless we receive that paperwork signed off by the chair, the dean, and the provost, it's just a conversation. 
So what it can do is just delay the whole awarding of the degree. Because then I'll identify that, hey, you didn't take Education 203, or the report will reflect that. Because the paperwork either didn't leave one office to the next office, it might be in my office. But if you wait until the end of spring or the end of fall when I'm auditing all the students whose records are ready, all that paperwork cease. So this kind of information needs to be submitted now. And if you're in spring, definitely get those wheels turning. If you're told that you didn't have to take a course because you transferred it in, please make sure that you get the course substitution in. Let's just say you took a lot of education courses. It wasn't specifically the Education 203 course. However, what they're saying is that you took enough education courses that you don't have to take the, you don't have to enroll in the Education 203 course. That's fine. That's called a waiver, so you're given a pass. Again, the, these two elements are not adding any credit, so it's what you have. So a course substitution just says that you don't have to take a class. We still need to head down to that 120 credit cumulative in order for you to be awarded a degree. And I think I skimmed past that, but that's another Comar code. All state institutions, public state institution, you must have all four-year institutions, you must have a minimum of 120 credits. And at COP in a 2.0 GPA, special ed, I believe it's 2.5, sports management, it's a 2.3, nursing 2.5, and social work 2.5, okay? But everyone else, criminal justice, applied psych is a 2.0. I don't want to lowball anyone, but hey, all right? Oh, and can you go back just real quick? And this is where you would see that your course exception is, has been processed. It'll say right there, okay? It'll say that it's being met because of this, okay? But again, if you are a fall person and I start getting a whole lot of course substitutions, you might not see that it's processed. I'll just attach it to the graduation application because it's kind of late to be receiving it now anyway, okay? Okay, and so a lot of times I am communicating back and forth with departments. Now that we receive the graduation um, applications via a graduation application portal, you need to look for yourself to see if your major and your minor is there. I was talking about Ms. Ms. Guam. She has an applied psych major, but she also has nursing. So she would see two plans of studies right here, and she would still need her concentration to be showing. So I get a lot of applications for the social work, applied psych, biology. So with your biology majors, if you are a physician assistant, that needs to say that. Where's my pointer? So if you are a biology major, this needs to say whether or not you're a biology track or not. Once that's blank, I have to send an email back to your department to have you complete a declaration of major form so that I know how to audit or this audit or the audit team knows how to audit your record. So if you're psych, I spoke to a gentleman in the audience, it's not saying this just yet. So we need to have him complete a declaration of major form at some point so we'll know what track so we know how to audit. So you could see for yourself, sometimes it's a delay. So I try to catch them once I get the application, but hey, one could slip through, but I'm really pretty much on it. So if you see that you have submitted an application for graduation and then you get hit with a declaration of major form, then that's it. So if you're pre-social work and it's still showing pre-social work, you'll get a declaration of major form stating that they're bringing you from the pre-social work to social work major, okay? So we're gonna have our next um, presenters come to the mic. And that's Miss Majory and don't forget your mic on it, Mr. Brown. Good evening. So real quick, I just wanted to piggyback off of the first two presenters. It is extremely important that when you guys go to your advisors that you have stuff taken care of. I used to go to my advisors with two options. 
because if you guys don't take care, the advisor is just there to advise. You should already know what coursework you need and present it to them. That's the responsible collegiate way to do things, right? The second thing is to piggyback off of what Mr. Bird said, student loans are the one thing you can't file on bankruptcy. It's the one thing that's going to affect you the most if you don't pay it, but it's also the easiest thing to get a deferment on. So take care of your business up front. All right, so I'm Tish. I'm the alumni president. Um, I come to you to talk to you today about things other than giving and how you can be engaged. So congratulations, first of all, for having been invited to senior seminar you know, so you guys can find out what you need to do and who you need to talk to post-graduation. So I'm here because just like you, I once sat in those seats, okay? Nobody else on campus except alum can say that they can really empathize with you in your circumstances, right? Is that fair to say? Anybody? Can I get a head nod, right? So I have only been alumni president for the last three months, so if you haven't seen me, that's why. I am um, a former uh, collegiate athlete here at Coppin, and I also coached volleyball here. Um, I'm on campus like three days a week. I'm always here. Um, if you guys need anything, I'm your connection to the ancestors. If you guys need uh, letters of recommendation, if you need training, if you need, um, to connect with someone to do an internship. Um, what else? Employment, right? We have thousands of alum. I'm sure that you've engaged people throughout your tenure in school. Somebody you know said cop into you if you're from the metro area, right? Can I get a hand raised if you have engaged an alum in your past, like through high school or any, nobody? Like your nurse wasn't from Coppin. The police officer that helped you wasn't from Coppin. Okay, I got some hands, I got some hands, okay. So lastly, I wanna talk to you guys about how you can, well, not lastly, but what we do is make these connections, right? You see Tish on campus, she's supporting whatever team it is, she's at All Star Night, she spoke at Investiture, because you guys need to see people who are like you in these positions that make these connections, right? Um, also, how can you engage? You can come to events. We have events all through the year. Make sure your information is updated so we can contact you. Wear your paraphernalia, right? Wear your alumni pins that you will get during um, the commencement process. Um, Buy some gear for your family, for holidays, for your young people that you love. Create a real synergy around the institution that you saw fit to come and give your money and grind for four years, right? Is that fair? Okay. So I want to say this too. In life, you can never know where you're going unless you know where you came from, okay? That's Sankofa. It's an African and Dink or tribal saying, and I have a tattoo on the back of my neck. That's how sincere I am about it, right? You come to this school and you go to class, and how many of us are commuters? We never stayed on campus. Raise your hand real high, okay? So the majority of us might be commuters. It's a commuter school, right? Still make those connections. If you hear about something that's going on, if you know you want to meet new people, there are activities and groups and clubs you can join now. Make the best of your college experience, right? You only get one time. You can go to grad school and stuff, but it's a little bit different, right? Um, we have a lot of good events coming up. We're currently planning for homecoming. Some of the events will be virtual. Some will be hybrid. Some will be in person. So homecoming for us, as you all know, is in the spring semester, which is technically winter, right? It's in February, February 12th, coming up in 2022. So just know that there will be things on the website that you can check and they will be identified as alumni functions. And in addition, the first year you graduate, you get 
a waiver of your $30 fee. So annual alumni association dues are only $30 in 500 lifetime. However, your first year out, you can just go to the website, like if you were gonna pay, click that you just graduated, and then you get a free membership for that year, okay? Did I miss anything else? Um, does anybody have any questions for me? Again, my name is Tish Madry, Coppin State University National <laughs> Alumni Association President. This is Brandon Brown, he's from Institutional Advancement. He's gonna talk to you guys about the spirit of giving. Thank you. Thank you, Tish, I'll be brief. So congratulations to everyone on this uh, historic milestone for you. The mission of the senior class gift campaign is to promote a philanthropic spirit among the graduating class. Students who participate in the class gift are given the opportunity to start their legacy of giving to the university. Becoming part of this tradition shows that the class of 2022 is a class that values the education they receive carries the same spirit and eagle pride of past eagle classes, believes in reaching out in order to give back and help future students so they have access to the same opportunities that you did. As you make your plans for graduation, please don't forget to leave your legacy at CSU. Class of 2022, class campaign officially starts tonight. Uh, it will go until February. All graduates who make a minimum gift of $20.22 will receive the cop and giving cord to be worn during commencement. That's this. So stay tuned for more announcements about the class gift. Um, I don't know if you all follow the uh, copying room or not, but uh, we've already posted the link there. You can go to the, the link tree. Uh, I'm quite sure you know how to work that. And so, um, just a little bit more information. If you need anything else about giving, just email coppingiving at coppin.edu. And just a little information about last year. Last year was our first year that we did this. And uh, 2021, they had a total of 78 seniors that donated. Uh, the class raised a little over $2,000. They really just wanted to get their name on the Fannie Jackson Coppin statue. Uh, so we're encour encouraging this class to give to the Senior Opportunity um, Scholarship program so reach out to everyone in the class you know let's make the class of 22 uh, the best class by getting 100 donors and raising a little bit more than two thousand dollars so thank you thank you mr brown oh it's okay there you go you're welcome okay so i'm gonna have to breeze past some of this information and it's, it'll be okay because we're gonna put this on our website so you can look at it time and time again okay so how to apply for graduation your advisor in the advisor advisee you should be speaking about this your junior year so that it could be submitted by that first semester of your senior year but if we're doing it now now is great now is better than than not at all because I'm still receiving late applications now for some students so you have to have an application students think that if I don't submit an application that just means that I'm not participating in a commencement no we need to know that you are someone a candidate first of all so that we can audit the record so we can award the degree so the fifty dollars um, that is required for the application is non-refundable. However, if you have to reapply for graduation, it's waived, okay? So let's just say there are five opportunities for students to graduate from Coppin. Every time there are courses being taken, you could graduate. So it's winter, so this winter I have one whole application. Someone is gonna take a class in the winter, we're gonna audit their record and then we're going to send them their diploma. So they're gonna get their diploma maybe sometime mid-January. So for students who are um, candidates of fall of 2021, let's just say you miss a course and you need to take another course in the spring, unfortunately. Again, no bad vibes or negativity, but if you do, you need, we need a new application because we're gonna open up that portal for you to register for classes. So. When you do, when you do get, and I'll get to that page. Oh, the pointer. Yes. 
when you do apply, it will say that, um, that you have what year you're actually graduating, what semester and what year. It's one spring ceremony, so a lot of students say that, hey, um, I graduated in the spring. Um, until your degree is awarded, you were a participant, okay? So the people that are going to be joining you in the spring, for those spring completers, we're going to have people from summer one, summer two, fall, winter, and spring. They're going to make up the commencement class of um, 2022, okay? So if you do have to take a class in, this, in summer one, we would want you to be a part of the upcoming commencement of 2023. Because if you, we want only people who are finishing in the spring to actually participate. So we're having everyone from last summer one, summer two, people who are completing now in the fall, they're gonna participate in that ceremony, but they'll already have their diplomas, okay? So you're not, we're not waiting till spring to start giving out your diplomas. If you have already graduated, you are going to get your diploma, unless you have a hole like we were talking about, okay? Okay, so this is a checklist, and this is just saying to go to your advising report that we spoke about, go to the calendar, see what your deadline dates are. Also, you wanna satisfy any obligation, tickets, fines, et cetera. Those are the things that will prevent this office from disseminating your diploma. Um, we also, that exit interview that Mr. Bird spoke about, um, we have our students go to studentloans.gov as well to get um, that SL hole to be resolved from your account. Review your names. Make sure you're going to submit names. You might want your married name on your diploma or your maiden name or your change of name. We need that documentation because we'll only know you as, you'll only be known to Coppin as what you were admitted as. So if you were, Jamie Farr, when you started, but then it's now hyphenated. We need your marriage certificate, and there's a document called a student data information form that you would have to complete along with that marriage certificate or divorce certificate or a change of name that you've received in order for us to change that. Um, review the holes. Bookstore has all your regalia. Sometime in March, they'll probably start to stock the bookstore with your information. We'll talk a little bit about career development, and please check your Eagle card. If you have a $5 balance on there, that could turn into $20 if you don't use up that um, $5, because then if they have to administratively deal with that $5, that's $20. So just check those things. Okay, and we already talked about them. And I think we have next is um, the graduation indicators. So that is located here. So a lot of you, how many people are planning on graduating in spring of 2022? Okay, all right, and I'm sure we have um, folks watching virtually. At present, I only have like 41 spring applications on my desk. So that means that Either it's on someone else's desk waiting to get um, endorsed and then sent to us. But if you do not receive an email saying, hey, congratulations, I've received your graduation applications, we don't have it. And I'm pretty on top of things. So if I get it that day, you will get an email. If not that day, you'll get it the very next day. All right, so how many, how many folks have received an email saying, hey, congratulations, I have your graduation application and please pay? Okay, so it has a laundry list of things that are in this PowerPoint for you to do. So, good, right? It's a good feeling. So that's why I like to process, process the applications immediately because I want to know that you've received my application. Okay, things that can, and again, once you submit a fall application, you will see fall graduation application here. But once you click on it, it'll say something like winter. That's letting you know that your account has been deactivated the following semester or session, which would be winter. So you won't be able to register because you told us that you were leaving us in fall. Okay, so if you know to yourself that you need to take additional courses, you need to revisit your advisor, please, and let them know, hey, I'm not doing too steady in this class, and I might have to retake it in the spring. Thus, we need a new application, 
and then they can submit it to us and we'll lift that deactivation to make it active so you could register all over again. Okay, and we tell that to um, the chairpersons as well when we submit the report to them. If you already know that your candidate is denied for the fall, you should already be contacted them. But don't leave it all on your chair and your department. If you know you're not doing well in a fall course and you need an additional semester, please get the graduation application so that you could get into the course of your choosing or your final requirements. It's also a way to have you speak with your advisor to say, this is what I need, so that we're sure this very second time that you're applying for graduation, you hit the mark. And these are reasons why we will not be able to disseminate the diploma. So you can, be, you can have your degree and it be awarded, but we're sitting on your diploma because there's a hole from another department. I get calls daily about, I haven't received my diploma because everyone leaves and they forget to check whatever type of holes that might be on their account. It could be a SL hole, it could be a parking fine, it could even be $5 from um, printing. But if we see a hold, we're forbidden or prohibited from disseminating that diploma. Okay, I think we skipped a section. Can we go back to commencement, please? And now I'd like to have Dr. Wanza join us to speak about the commencement ceremony. And I think we're running out of time, so. Good evening. Um, this is probably the most important thing that you want to hear tonight is that commencement is going to be on May 22nd, 20th. See, somebody already checked, huh? May 20th. And it will be on the track soccer field, meaning that we probably would have to give out tickets. And it probably would only be about two tickets per graduate because it's going to be outside. Grad Fest is going to be on March 30th. And it will be over in the Todd Center. At that time, you'll be able to start purchasing your caps and gowns. We don't have the price yet. Last year it was around $100, so we will have a, a price for you soon. So it's very important for you to check your email and the website. We have a commencement website where we'll be posting information about photographs, um, parking, um, anything that deals with that day, that particular day. That, um, and we have not decided yet the time. The time will be announced later of what time of day we're going to have commencement. Uh, any questions about commencement? Yes. I can't hear you. Oh. You have to wait for grad fest because we don't have them yet. You can probably try to order them, but it'll probably be easier just to wait to grad fest because that's when we will have them in stock. And the gowns are blue if you decide to order them. If you try to order from Oak Hall. Yes. No. We won't have the seating. We'll probably only have about 3,000 seats. We're working on that now, on the seating, yes. Is it also having a virtual one? Yes. We're going to have a virtual ceremony as well. And plus, it'll be broadcast that day. It'll be live streamed. But we're going to have a virtual um, where the students would get a chance to leave messages, and um, that would be posted on YouTube. That's through Herf Jones, so you get more information about the virtual one, the virtual commencement as well. Any other questions? Because Ms. Hallman said I only had a minute. <laughs> no more questions? Okay, so make sure you check your email. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wanza, for sticking within your time limit. I wish I did. So we have to kind of backtrack. We're out of order just now. 
Okay, so graduating with honors and we're almost done. Um, this is Latin honors we're speaking of, all right? So Latin honors, cum laude, your GPA should be between 3.5 and 3.49. Now, we have some students who transferred in courses. When we speak about transferring courses and we're talking about the eligibility for Latin honors, those courses count. So if you transferred in a 2.5 and you really weren't that academically sound prior to getting to copping and that's when you became a superstar getting A's and B's, we're looking at your entire body of work. So that 2.5 that you transferred in could really impact your 3.8 at copping. Therefore, you will not meet Latin honors, okay? Um, you may be recognized by your department or your, yeah, by your department as well as your college because of the great, excellent work that you did here at Coppin, 3.9. But if you received a D or an F or, or two Ds, two Fs, or a combination of the two, you will not be eligible. So let's just say you retook the courses. You're still not eligible if you have two Ds, two Fs, or a D or an F, all right? So whatever your GPA is, all right? So um, can you turn to the next page? Now there is something called clemency for honors. That means that you would not have attended any other colleges or universities prior to Coppin in a decade. So let's just say 10 years ago, you weren't that great of a student, you was just getting things together and that's why you stopped out in the first place. If it's been 10 years since you've been enrolled in an institution, those courses or grades won't count. But you have to bring that to my attention because when you transfer in, in the fall of 2020, it's not gonna tell me that it's been a decade since then. So I need that information to be brought to my attention so that we can exclude those grades and run the, the process for honors. Okay, okay so um, you may wanna, can you? Yeah, no, just if you could magnify some of that. So if you're really wondering where your graduation app is, we do have your departments and telephone numbers here if you wanna give them a buzz or just email them, hey, I don't see that I've received my GF1 in the indicator in your student center or your GS2 is what you would see if you have um, submitted a summer, a spring 2022 graduation application. If you see an NPG, we have it. That just means we need you to pay for it. So N NPG, you don't need to call anyone and say, hey, where's my application? But also know your department. We have some departments where they're waiting to assess everyone's record before submitting it to us. We have some departments that just sign it off and they're hoping that your advisor took a look at the entire record, okay? But some department actually goes through the whole um, audit process before they sign off on it and submit it to us. So don't call and bother them if that's their process, okay? Because they might be waiting until November to December to get it to us. But just know it becomes a ghost town after Thanksgiving because as soon as you get back, it's time for exams, okay? And then it's a whole winter break and then classes begin at the end of January. Then February the 8th is the last day for us to submit the the names to the commencement committee, all right? Okay, so this is the last slide, but we have a beautiful campus and we have beautiful minds on our campus. We want you to utilize the career services. If you can, because I went and I did a test model on this. We need you to log on to www.collegecentral.com at Coppin and upload your resume because this is something that your student fees pays for. And this is a very expensive um, program. You want um, folks that are looking for new college grads, internships, things like that, and please know what your specialization is or are. If you're good at Visio, your Missy, your Missy majors out there, 
you want to put that in as a specialization, okay? Um, and my supervisor is coming to the podium now because she is going to, uh, okay, we have Mr. Carr. He's going to talk a little bit about um, the School of Graduate Studies because we'd like to keep you here an extra two years. Right. Mr. Carr. There, there is no place like home. So there's no need for you to go to another institution when you already know everybody here and um, we want to keep you here. So we have 13 graduate programs. We have 11 certificate programs. Who want to, um, social work is coming in fall on the graduate level in fall of 22 and health information management is also coming Oh, okay, I thought I could get away with that. No. <laughs> All right. We have 13 graduate programs, and we have 11 certificate programs. And I'm going to give every one of you all one of these tonight so that you can know what Coppin has to offer you on the graduate level. If you fill out an application tonight, and every school you go to, there is an application fee. But I'm going to hook y'all tonight while you're here. If you, and I already got permission from the Dean of Graduate Studies, if you fill out an application tonight just to start the process, you can start in the fall because you're graduating in the spring. Your application fee will be waived tonight only. Don't come to me tomorrow. Don't come to me next week. Mr. Carr, can I get that? No, it's tonight. Tonight. We will waive your $50 application fee. So um, on here, who, who is interested in coming to grad school? Thank you. All right, you make sure. Oh, we got a few. I need like 25 of y'all tonight because I told them my goal was 25. So I need 25 people. Right. Okay, I'm going to get all of y'all tonight. Y'all can meet me right after Miss Ballin, and then I can... Um, do my job and do it well. Listen, you want to stay at Coppin. There's no need of going to another institution where you got to start your friendship all over again. And Ms. Ballin, it, Ms. Harmon is um, rushing me, and she know I don't like to be rushed. All right, but I'm going to go, but y'all see me in the back because your application fee is waived. Waived. So again, if you do have questions, if you do have questions, um, we have an uh, email, uh, registrars at coppin.edu email address. That if you have questions for the night, but we are posting this presentation so you can look at these slides again and again. And Mr. Bird has a final question prior to Ms. Barlin closing out the activity. So again, thank you for coming. Please be wary of scams, especially when it revolves around your student loans. Please be wary of scams as it revolves around your student loans. There are some websites out there, uh, studentloanforgiveness.com. Do not go through them. Please go through, there, there are some loan forgiveness programs, but you need to go through your servicer. Do not pay a fee for anything for servicing your loan. Okay? I'm telling you, you're going to get the information. Please ignore it. Go through your servicer for anything related to your student loans. And please, like she said earlier, please communicate to your lender. If you're having issues, talk to them. You, a lot of times you don't even have to fill out a form and they'll put your loan in deferment, okay? Please communicate with them. Do not ignore them. Ignore the scams, though. <laughs> okay? I'm sorry. I meant to say that earlier. Good evening. How's everybody? Class of 2022. Is that you? Is that you? 
Okay, okay, okay. So I just want to ask you three questions before I close out. How many credits do you need to graduate? Hmm. What GPA do you need to graduate? Well, it depends on your major. At least a 2.0, but some majors are 2.5. Okay. Uh, what thing do you need to do if you're a transfer student? What thing do you need to do before you apply for graduation? Speak to your advisor, check your transcript, make sure that all your courses have been evaluated correctly. And that is on you because you need to know more than your advisor knows. You need to tell your advisor, oh no, according to these documents, this is what I need to graduate. So you should know what your curriculum is. You should know all the courses that are required. You need to make sure you know your major and your, grad, your general education requirements have been satisfied. And you may need to make sure that you have a C or better in all of your major courses. So those are some things you just need to remember. Thank you so much for coming this evening. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it, the registrar's office. I'd like to thank Mrs. Hallman for a great presentation this evening. Give her a hand. Yes, thank you. I'd like to thank her technical assistant, Mrs. Means, for operating the projector. I'd like to thank our tech people, Mr. Harper back there, who's been live streaming this evening, and Mr. Brown, who manages our auditorium. I would also like to thank him for letting us hold this activity tonight. So um, I expect to see all of you spring 2022, May 20th, at whatever time they say it's going to be. I expect to see you on the stage with your smiling faces. Hopefully we'll be rid of these masks. I don't know if we will be. But I do expect to see you there. And again, thank you so much for coming and investing in your future at Coppin State University. Thanks.